My next guest is a guy who I've gotten to know over the last uh, couple of years, and he's terrific at his job, and he's always been kind enough to call into the show, and he's calling into the show the night after the NBA draft, in which, by the way, his Houston Rockets were the only team to do nothing. I mean, I mean obviously something was happening, I assume, but no activity, no picks acquired, no picks traded, no players drafted. That's the Houston Rockets general manager, Daryl Morey. How are you, Daryl? Happy birthday. Thanks, brother. I I'm, appreciate uh, that. I'm not going to be able to compete with your other guests today. Holy cow. No, no, no. You are what we call a newsmaker, Daryl Morey. You are uh, a, you I are. I try to not be a newsmaker. I, no. <laughs> hey, I did look. it last night. I, we, we had lots of news and then did nothing. First time ever. We we've I think it's the first time we've ever not had a pick. It's crazy. What so what did you do last night, Daryl? Probably made one million phone calls with our staff even and uh no, it's uh it's pretty amazing how many things you work on to how many things get done. Uh the number of deals you talk about versus not. We got real close to one where it was basically Basically, if a pick had gone a certain way early in the draft, we would have gotten it. And if not, we wouldn't. So that was crazy. And then the second round had a lot more demand than usual. Like the the picks were flying around, but we usually try to buy one, but none were bought yesterday. They were all attached to second round picks. So so we, uh, we, we weren't able to get in. All right. So walk me through again the best you can without, I guess, giving away whatever story you're, you don't want you want to keep in house. So the top of the draft, you were interested in a pick at the top of the draft, Daryl? Uh, it was at uh, it was in the early twenties. Okay. And uh, basically, it was on the clock. Everything had been agreed to, and we were counting down. This has never happened to me before. We were counting down the seconds and just said, "Hey, if if this guy goes, then we don't have a deal. But otherwise, we do." And usually, I've had that happen a lot. Not. I've never had it happen where the guy went right one pick before. So was, anyone who's been in fantasy football leagues knows what it feels like, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you wanted a guy and then the team, you had a deal for that guy if it fell to the team that you had struck a deal for, but the team right before yes. took yeah, the player exactly. you wanted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Okay. But you never know. Sometimes these deals reconstitute later, and you know, right. we'll see. We'll so see. did this yeah. deal that didn't take place on your part uh, require you to give up a player on your current roster or future considerations? Yeah, it would, have, it would have involved uh, it would have involved a roster and draft pick. So, but you know, and you know these things all the time. They you get close. It's just the one had never gotten this close before. So pretty pretty crazy. Daryl Morey, Rockets general manager. Why do you think there was so much demand in the second round last night? You know, night? I don't know. I thought this was uh, just a normal draft, like pretty solid players, but nothing special deep. But I think other teams thought is deeper so i think there's a lot of activity to trade in there's also the probably boring to your listeners but there's no. a cap reason that a lot of teams are trying to jump into the second round this year as well uh in that the second round pick pick contracts are cheaper than others and it and it allows you to maneuver under the cap a little easier sometimes well i mean i think it's interesting to to the uh, viewers and listeners of this show daryl uh because there's so much conversation being taking place about that anthony davis trade with the lakers and whether the lakers did the the right uh due diligence in figuring out when's the best time to strike a deal uh, or when to make it official because of the cap space that you can offer a free agent, et cetera, et cetera. How, how does that, how do you keep track of all those things? Yeah, it's a very complicated set of rules. I've gotten pretty used to them. Now I'm, I think I'm in my 14th or 15th year. So you get, you get comfortable. You also have really good people around you like we do. And most teams do. And uh, yeah, I mean, the rules actually at this point make no sense whatsoever. Um, and we've talked to the league office about it, and the league office wouldn't say it as bluntly as I said it, but basically the over time the kludges have been have been wrapped upon the kludges have been wrapped upon the enigmas i mean it's like the all the rules they set up made sense in the nineties and eighties and two thousands when they originally were put in, but then as time goes by, they have to plug holes and gaps and negotiate them with the players union and and over time, the rules really have morphed into something that makes almost no sense if you look at it holistically. So I'll tell you one thing that makes very little sense for a lot of fans, and I guess Daryl Morey, Rockets general manager, you're a good guy to ask about this. 
are all the picks. There were 25 of the 60 picks last night. The picks were take, made by teams that were not picking the player for themselves. They were taking it for another team for whom they've already made a deal. And sometimes that, that, that right got transferred to another team that makes a deal. And it is so confusing yeah, it to makes watch. Yeah, it impossible the- to watch. It, it's, it's really like my friends who want to follow our team and why it's just, it's just impossible on the nights when you have picks and trades and, and the reality is it doesn't have to be that way. What the NBA needs to allow is to have tentative deals be announced and the NFL does that. I know. And there's, there's really no reason not to accept. You might have the occasional error where a deal falls through. And, and because of that, a guy, if something gets announced, it has to be, you know, backtracked, but that's way less bad than the entire universe watching our draft not understanding what's happening so i uh, i think we need to relax those rules a little bit and let teams announce their deals like they do in the nfl so that the telecast people aren't putting on the wrong hats and stuff like that well what what about the idea daryl of maybe moving the draft to after free agency would you be good with something yeah no that that's an interesting concept as well that uh, we've we've discussed with the league uh, other other sports do that. You obviously know mm-hmm. the, the other sports well. That I think NFL does that. So um, yeah, no, it's. Uh, I think it's. I think it's totally fine. I, I would slightly prefer it. I think to have the draft after, because a lot of the a lot of the trades we we make with draft picks, we have to make tentative later for free agency, and 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 that creates complexity. So. Yeah, I would probably, I'd probably put the draft after. I, you know, there are trade-offs to each. That one's less clear. That that answer's less clear, though. Daryl Morey, Houston Rockets general manager here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. You said a couple days ago that Chris Paul's going to be a Rocket next season. Do you? Yes. I, I, is, that a, is that a 100%? Yeah, it's 100%, yeah. Well, you can say that with that certainty right now. I can, yes. Okay. What, what would you, how would you categorize the relationship with James Harden, Daryl? Uh, great. Yeah. Okay. So there is there any there to this there that's been all over I, the place? I don't everywhere? see it. I mean, I, I've I've talked about it before, but you know, they they did have like a heated discussion on the bench in Game Six, but for me, that happens twenty to forty times a year, and of course, you're going to have even more heated discussions in the most important game of our season, Game Six, there. So I, you know, to me, it's much to do about nothing. Honestly, it's been really, I'm, I, you know, I've had times in my career where we deserve to get just raked through the coals and attacked. Like we had the year we won 41 when people thought we were gonna, you know, be the first seed in the West or second seed, and had a, you know, the wheels came off, and we, and you know, I my, myself and the organization deserved a lot of criticism there, and I have no issues with that. This year has been odd. Like it's just been really strange. Like that that people are missing the fact that we're we're going to be the favorites in the West when we come out of this. Uh, in my opinion, we all these other teams are scrambling to keep their solid five starters together. We have our five back. Plus we have mid level. If there's a trade that makes us better, we'll do it. Um, we're going to go in. I think with the highest win over under, if not first, second. So it's been a really really strange journey <laughs> for me. Like. I'm, I'll take the media heat when, when we deserve it. This one's sort of odd. Well, I guess part of the media conversation, Daryl, has been uh, that, that the people on your roster have, have been made available, or at least that yeah, was the word. Sure. And then, and then uh, yeah, and the extension with Mike. I, right. I get why, I get why there's been a little, you know, noise. But you know, look look back to Toronto a year ago, and credit to Masai, who just is brilliant and did an amazing job. Um, you know, they. They switched coaches to a D league coach. Happened to be our D league coach. Well, he's a, he was an assistant at that point, but our former champion D league coach Nick Nurse, who was amazing. You know that 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 was a fair amount of controversy. They traded their they traded one of their significant players. I mean, there was it was you could call it a lot of change and turmoil last year, and there was not any anything close to the level of noise for that. And then obviously Messiah did an amazing job and they won the title. So 
Um, I draw a lot of analogies between what Toronto did last year and what we're hoping to do this year, just fight above the noise. So. Well, one of the many reasons why I love talking to you, Daryl, Daryl Morey, Rockets general manager, and is is you are just so free with a lot of thoughts that you don't hear from a lot of general managers, one being in particular a couple of years ago. You just flat out admitted that the Warriors, that this is an arms race and that you are trying to keep up with the arms races the Warriors were a few years ago, beginning their ascension and being uh, appearing to be dynastic, and they've made five straight finals, as we know. So I'm wondering if any of the concept of you're building your roster or massaging it or trading uh, certain players might be changed by the fact that Durant's potentially not returning and Clay Thompson is uh, maybe out for next year too. I'm wondering if that has affected your yeah, it, immediate. It, it has, you know, we, like I said before, and I was, I was surprised people were amazed. I said it, but it seemed like so basic to me. Like we, we knew we had to be Golden State to win the title. Now that's less clear. That absolutely does change how you look at things there. You Golden State provides maybe one of the most unique defensive challenges in NBA history. Uh, your roster construction literally almost demands you you factor them in, especially if you know you're going to play them. Uh, I think they're still going to be pretty dang good next year, uh, but obviously, you know, if they have injuries, they're gonna they're gonna be less, not quite as good. So, um, yeah, it does change how you look at it. The the different teams that we may face. Um, it's going to be actually hard to figure out the path. To the, it's it's wide open, which is exciting. Uh, I think this is our time to to prove it and show we can take that last step. But it's definitely more wide open, and that does change things. Okay, so Paul, Chris Paul's a, a rocket, hundred percent. What what are the what are the what's the percentage that uh, he and Harden do another State Farm commercial together, Daryl? Percentage <laughs> on that? That's actually a great great question you get that on vegas i would think pretty high i, okay. I don't know i haven't been involved in that he okay. did wreck his kitchen so maybe that was the source of attention <laughs> maybe, maybe that caused the trouble you know what daryl we need to we need to investigate that um, yes exactly thanks for the call daryl really appreciate the insights of uh it's just amazing again i don't know if, were you aware of that i know the bucks Ended up with no players. Same with the Mavericks. The Suns moved some people around in terms of picks. Thunder, the Nuggets acquired a, a pick from the Heat late. But other than that, the Rockets were the only team. No activity, obviously. No I know, you're, you're just trying to make me feel bad right now. No, but. no, no, no. <laughs> I, it's no outward discernible activity. We know, yeah, obviously. Yeah, no, I you know. know. I know. It's it's tough when you go home to your, your, your wife and friends. They're like, what happened? Yeah, why were you gone 24 hours a day and didn't come home two nights because you had a hotel next to the arena? Like, uh, nothing happened. A lot of, yeah, it's great. It's really, it's really awesome. Where are the picks, Daryl? Yeah, where? exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for the call, Daryl. Right, well, thanks, the, Rich. Let's shut again. You go. That's Daryl Morey, Rockets GM. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.